Hi, so normally people do this when they're like big on YouTube and stuff and have like a million subscribers and get checks in the mail. Um, but I want to make a fan video because I'm a huge fan of this guy and like I just can't get enough of it. So I'm going to play one of his videos and give my response in this video. Um, so I'm not sophisticated enough and I'm poor. So I don't have like a screen of his face and everything. I'm going to use a phone and just watch it on here. So here we go. Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to the channel where the Bible and critical thinking meet to give you real Christian commentary about the things that matter. Thanks so much for watching. Let's get into the video. So most of what we focus on for this channel is false teaching. However, false teaching doesn't just come from self-proclaimed pastors like Joel Osteen or Kenneth Copeland, for instance. You see, false teaching can come from any person who says something unbiblical. Of course, there are some people who believe that only false teaching that relates to the gospel is actually a problem, and all false teaching that relates to issues that they deem as secondary are not a big deal. Today's video will illustrate that that is not the case. So to begin, false teaching can come from anyone, and today it happens to be coming from the popular singer Kelly Clarkson. Now, Kelly rose to fame after winning the first season of American Idol in 2002. Also, Let's take note of the irony of a Christian entering and winning a competition that literally has the word idol in the name, especially when 1 John 5.21 says, keep yourselves from idols. Of course, the Apostle John wasn't talking about American Idol when he wrote that, I understand. But it's mm. interesting to me that a Christian could be so quick to enter a competition which uses the negative biblical word like idol in such a positive and unchristian way. It would honestly be funny if it weren't so disappointing. In any case, Kelly has to... Hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> You're gonna use? Okay, I can understand... I'm really trying here, really trying to understand how he gets that from that. American Idol. Let's just keep watching. Claire that Christ she sake. is a Christian with Southern Baptist roots. And she even says that she was a youth group leader for her local church at one point. That alone should be concerning. But let's take a look at some of her quotes about Christianity and then compare it to some other things she said over the years. Kelly has said in the past, quote, I always grew up in church. I was the leader of our youth group. I've always grown up pretty close to church and oh my with God, God but I think I've just like gotten a lot closer minutes. just because he's the only one I can lean on, end quote. So she says that God is the only one she can lean on. And when she says that, Pay attention. She's making a claim about having faith in God. Yeah. Now, most Christians will see this and just say with no discernment, awesome, it looks like Christianity has a big-name celebrity who's standing up for the awesome. truth of the Bible. And folks, we believe a whole bunch of celebrities who come out and say stuff exactly like this, and unfortunately, we are being deceived. We say to ourselves, well, I'd Romans never 10 known. 9 tells us if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, well, then you'll be saved. Therefore, all these Christian celebrities must be true members of God's church if they claim to be Christians. The problem with this logic, though, is that the Bible doesn't just have one verse in it. There are many other equally biblical texts and passages which we are ignoring when it comes to Christian celebrities. You don't say the Bible has more than one passage in it that could be used to draw more than one conclusion, even contradictory ones. What are you talking about, Colin Miller? Things being biblical or not. Anything is biblical or not. Have you read the Bible? From the Old Testament to the New Testament, the laws in Leviticus and Genesis and Deuteronomy? Are you talking about that? Then you can't wear clothing of two different kinds of fabric. Do you eat pork, Mr. Miller? Do you have a Christmas ham every year? 
That's unbiblical. New Testament, Old Testament, Jesus said this, Paul said that. You can find anything in the Bible. Have you not read history? How many churches have said, we're the one true gospel and this is the one true way? You can't even count them. Why do you think there's so many denominations? Because you can pick a verse of anything you want, basically. Was Jesus the Son of God? I don't know. He says so in the Gospel of John when he says, I and the Father are one, yada, yada, yada. Or was Jesus just a prophet, a human prophet, not the Son of God? I don't know. Jesus says, uh, no one is as good as the Father. Why do you call me good? How do you reconcile that? Because the Bible, you're reading it as if it's like people who wrote the Bible knew it was the Bible. They knew it was one coherent work. But history works backwards from that. The Bible was slapped together in Christianity, as we know it, at a certain point in history. And the church was built around that hodgepodge of writings and prophetic messages later. This incoherent conglomeration of laws and psalms and prophecy, all of this was made. A church. And after the Reformation, when the Roman Catholic's monopoly was lost on Christianity, that's why you have the Protestants, the Lutherans, come Anglicans, come Anabaptists, Calvinists, Wesleyans, Methodists, and all their denominations. Why is that? Because each one was trying to find the true nature and using their own angle from the Bible. So my point is to say that something is definitely biblical or definitely not biblical, you're fighting an ancient battle that is pointless. I mean, most especially if you don't take the Bible as the inerrant word of God, but that aside, even if you do, everything you say, someone could pick a Bible verse where you're wrong. Everything you affirm Someone could pick a Bible verse to deny it. You're using this crap, not understanding that concept. Read a book, read history, not just the freaking Bible. And maybe you'd understand the context in which all of this was written. Kelly Clarkston, are you, fo are you kidding me right now? How long is this video? Okay, we can watch a little more. Following the example of Kelly Clarkson, though, let's take a look at how her Christianity works out in practice. In 2018, two fans of Kelly Clarkson got fake married. Now, why do I say fake married? Because these people <laughs> were and biblically, marriage is the lifelong union between a man and a woman, and God will not recognize the union between anybody else. Ephesians... He won't? God won't recognize it? Or you won't. Anyway. 531 says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. As a Christian, you think Kelly Clarkson would agree with the Bible that marriage is the union of a man and a woman and that homosexual activity is a sin. Romans 1, 26 through 27 makes this abundantly clear when it says, quote, For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchange natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with other men and receiving in themselves the due penalty of their error. The Bible says that all homosexual activity is sinful and wrong. Period. Paragraph. End of story. No exceptions. Again, you would imagine that Kelly Clarkson the dedicated Christian that she says this she guy. is would agree with the Bible here, right? Wrong. Because when someone on Twitter said that the fake marriage of these two fans was a, quote, sin any way you cut it, 
Clarkson responded by saying this, quote, I almost didn't respond to this because hate doesn't deserve a spotlight. But you know what? Truth does. And the truth is that God is love, and love shared between two people should be praised, not condemned, in my personal opinion. There are a few factors, a few statements that need to be addressed here. So let's tackle them one at a time. Let's do that, Colin. Number one, Kelly says, quote, hate doesn't deserve a spotlight, meaning that she believes calling homosexuality a sin is hate. There's an issue here, though, which is that if calling homosexuality a sin can be classified as hateful, then Kelly is actually saying that the Bible is hateful and by extension, the God who gave it. It is hateful. The Bible is hateful. The God that she claims to love and believe in is being rejected here. Leviticus 18.22 says, quote, You shall not lie with a man as with a woman. It is an abomination. It also says eating pigs is an abomination. You... Number two, Kelly says that, quote, Truth does deserve a spotlight which means that she believes her perspective is true. The only problem is that, as I've just demonstrated, her perspective does not match the Bible's perspective. Now, what does that mean? Well, put simply, it means that she believes her opinion is the ultimate truth, and the scriptures are not the ultimate truth, because when the Bible contradicted her view... There is no ultimate truth, and if there were, you wouldn't know it. How could you think, in the conceit of yourself, that you would know so as to preach and share the ultimate truth. It doesn't exist. Every person that wrote the Bible was flawed. How can a flawed thing produce a perfect thing? How can the finite produce something infinite like the ultimate truth? and then fortify around it the audacity to say that anything else is a failure of that ultimate truth. But I digress. He chose to go with that view a couple more minutes at the expense of God's word. My blood Kelly pressure can't that handle the Bible much more. Must submit to her feelings, not her feelings to the Bible. And that is very common in so-called Christianity today. Number three, Kelly says that homosexuality is okay because, quote, God is love. Again, there's an issue here. She's quoting 1 John 4, 7 when she says that God is love, and that's true. But how can you quote scripture to say that God is love, but then, on the other hand, reject scriptures that say homosexuality is sinful and even call those passages hateful? How can you quote passages that contradict other passages in the Bible? Again, how can you fail to live... Not just the Ten Commandments, but the 616 other commandments contained in the Jewish Torah. Why aren't you sacrificing goats, Colin? Why aren't you atoning during the Feast of Tabernacles or whatever? Why aren't you doing that? Because Jesus? A Jesus, someone walked up to him and was like, Jesus, are you getting rid of the law? And he's like, no, I'm not getting rid of the law. I'm here to fulfill it. So he was basically saying, not only should you be Jewish and follow the Torah, which you're not, with your haircut even, not only should you be that, but you should also follow Jesus. But the Bible says in John, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, again, you see the problem? The Bible says a lot of stuff. The very same book that described God as love also talks about the very same God destroying two entire cities you called don't say. Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 19. Yeah. And that was because they were participating in, you guessed it, homosexuality. Oh, yeah. You see, this makes no sense because Kelly it is developing make any her sense, worldview Colin. based exclusively off her own feelings and opinions and not on the truth of as Scripture. As if the Scripture Number weren't four. a giant and opinion. lastly, she says, quote, love shared between two people should be praised, not condemned, in my personal opinion. The God. fallacy here is that she believes homosexual unions are loving when biblically they are not. After all, how is it loving to help someone sin every time you participate in intimacy with them? How is it loving to call your relationship a marriage?